Hi everybody. I've got some questions in class about how to work with the proportions from this week. So I'm making this little video and I hope that it helps explain how these work. So let's start off and take a look at what a proportion is. Okay, so here's a question. Suppose you have two items and one of them costs five more dollars than the other item. And the question is, is this a big difference? Would this affect your decision on which item to buy? And the answer really depends on what the scale is of the items you're looking at. If this were, say, a notebook or a salad, $5 would be a big difference between the two prices. But if you're talking about a car, then $5 is not a big difference at all. And so this is where proportions come in. They look at what's called relative comparisons. Okay, and a relative comparison means that we're going to have a ratio. An absolute difference between two things means you subtract. A relative comparison means that we're going to have division, and that means fractions. So on this slide, we've got the definition of a ratio. And what it does is it compares the relative size of two or more quantities. All right. The way we usually say this is that the ratio of A to B is 2 to 5, okay, with, you know, whatever the numbers are. And what that means is that when you have two units of the first quantity, that you have five units of the second quantity. You can also turn this into a fraction, okay? So A to B would be written as the fraction with A over B. And then the 2 to 5 would also go the same way. Now note, a to B would be written as A over B, and B to A would be written as B over A. So they're not the same thing. It's really important to know which number comes first in the ratio. Okay, if I wanted to find B to A, well in this case they're telling me that A to B is 2 to 5, then B to A would be 5 over 2. So you can get either ratio, you just have to make sure that you're going in the same order. The first number in the ratio goes with the first letter, and the second number in the ratio goes with the second letter. And if the ratio has the first number over the second number, then you put the first number over the second number. So you just make sure they're in the same order. Now, we're going to need to solve equations in order to work with these, so I want to give you a quick method. It's not always the very quickest method, but this method is always going to work, and it has three steps. The first step is to cross multiply, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. The second step is to divide by the coefficient, and I'll show you what that means in a minute. Whoops, not spelling very well today. And the third step is to use your calculator. Okay, so by cross multiplying, I mean move the D on this side and the B on that side. So whatever those two denominators, the bottoms of the fractions are, you move them to the other side. All right. Then you're going to you're going to have one of those sides is going to have a number times the variable and you're going to divide by the coefficient. The coefficient is the number times the variable. And then finally, you're going to use your calculator to get the steps. So, let's take a look at this equation and here are my three steps. The first step is to cross multiply. So, I'm going to have the 8 times the 4. I move the 8 over to the left side and I'm going to have the 1.6 times the x. So the 8 has moved up here, the x has moved up here. Cool so far? So that was step 1. Step 2 now is to divide by the coefficient. So I look where the variable is, and the number in front of the variable is the coefficient. So then I divide both sides by that coefficient. And on the side that has the variable, that coefficient cancels out. So there's my second step. Then my third step is to use my calculator. So I'm going to take 8 times 4 
divided by 1.6. And let's see what that is on our calculator. Eight times four divided by 1.6. I'm just entering it exactly that way. And that's 20. So 20 equals x. And there's my solution to that equation. Let's try the second equation now. So I'm going to erase all this. And of course, I forgot to turn my phone off before this video, but that's okay. So my first step is to cross multiply. The 2.7 goes there, the 5 goes there. So I cross multiplied. The next thing is to take the number that's multiplied by the x, that's my 5, and divide on both sides. And it cancels on the side with the x. So now I have just an x in the equation. And I have 3 times 2.7, whoops, that's a 7, and that's a 2, and there's a point in the middle, over 5 equals x. There's my second step, and my third step is to use my calculator. 3 times 2.7 divided by 5. 3 times 2.7 divided by 5 is 1.62. So x equals 1.62 is the solution to that equation. Okay? Now let's look at some word problems where we use this. Okay? The first example is cooking. And I really love this Lifehacker website right here. Okay, Lifehacker is an awesome website. It tells you how to do all kinds of things. It tells you how to escape from a tornado. It tells you how to cook. It tells you just anything, how to make a baby go to sleep. It's an awesome website. So if you're ever interested in something kind of fun with some life hacks, that's a great website to look at. But this particular website talks about how to use ratios in cooking. Okay, so maybe you follow recipes a lot or maybe you want to try to cook without some recipes, and this is where the ratios come into play. And one of the recipes they talk about, one of the ratios they talk about, is the flour to liquid uh, ratio used to when you make bread. And the ratio is flour to liquid is five to three. Now the flour can be any kind of flour, and the liquid can be any kind of liquid. And that's where you get the the power with cooking with ratios, because if you want to make a hearty rye bread, you might want to use rye flour for the flour, and then you might want to put some of the, like the brine left over in a jar of dill pickles for the liquid. Or if you want to make some cinnamon bread, you might want to use some nice whole wheat flour or white flour, and then use some apple juice. But they're saying that no matter what you're doing, the flour to liquid is five, two, three. Now here's what this means. If I think flour over liquid as a fraction, remember the first thing in the ratio goes with the first number. So flour is on the top of the fraction, so I have a 5 on the top of the fraction. Liquid is on the bottom, and, or, and the second number goes with the liquid, so 5 to 3. I could also make a ratio that goes the other way if I wanted. I could go liquid over flour, but then in that case I'd have to put the 3 over the 5. Okay, so I just keep those together. So if I want to know how much liquid I need for 5 cups of flour, I take one of those fractions, either one, it's your choice. I'll use the flour over liquid just because that's what I had. Okay. So flour over liquid is 5 over 3 equals, let's see, the cut flour was 5 and the liquid was nothing, or liquid I don't know. So here's the equation I need to solve. 
So I'll cross multiply. Liquid times 5 equals 3 times 5. There's my cross multiplying. I'll divide by the 5. The 5 will cancel on the left hand side and I'll get liquid equals 3 times 5 over 5. And when I calculate that out on my calculator, that just becomes 3. And that's probably not a surprise because we already know 5 cups of flour goes with 3 cups of liquid. So let me erase that. Let's look at the second one. The second one says, for 10 cups of flour, how much liquid? Well, I know that flour over liquid is 5 to 3. And I know I have 10 cups of flour. Flour is on the top, so 10 over liquid. There's my equation. So I'll cross multiply. 5 times L equals 10 times 3. I'll divide by 5, and that'll give me liquid is 10 times 3 over 5. And in my calculator, whoops, okay, 10 times 3 divided by 5 is 6. So six right there. Now, you might be able to see right away, because I'm using twice as much flour, I should use twice as much liquid. And that is exactly how these work. OK? So this one we could maybe do in our heads. But now it gets a little bit more complicated, because there's not an easy number to see how to get from 5 to 12. So let's try this third one, and I'm going to do this one with the ratios as well. I know my ratio. Flour over liquid is 5 to 3. I know I have 12 cups flour. Flour is on the top of the fraction, so 12 will go on the top of the fraction. Here's my equation. I'll cross multiply 5 times L equals 12 times 3. I'll divide by the 5, because that's the number times the variable. That's always the number in front of the variable that I divide by. And I get liquid equals 12 times 3 divided by 5. And when I do that one on my calculator, 12 times 3 divided by 5 all at once, that gives me 7.2. And so I get 7.2 right there. OK. I'm going to leave the last one for you to do. Let me erase this out. So you try the last one. Pause the video right here and see how it goes. And then you can check with my answer. OK, here's the answer. One, whoops, my pen needs to go. One, let's try this one more time. My pen's not working all of a sudden. Okay, 1.2, got the pen to work. So did that work out for you? If not, ask me in class, and if it did, then you pat yourself on the back, good job. Let's look at a few more examples, just to be sure that we're on the same page here. So here's another one. OK, so this is one related to work. So if somebody can do a task in a certain amount of time, then you want to know how long it will take to do another task. So in this case, Caroline can sketch three cartoons in two hours. There's a ratio there. Cartoons to hours is three to two. Now we want to know how long, so we want to know time, hours, to t sketch six strips. Well, I know cartoons to hours is three to two, and so I know that now the cartoons is six, and the hours are what I want to know, and here's my equation. So again, 
I will cross multiply 3 times hours equals 6 times 2. There's my variable, so I'll divide both sides by 3. And that'll give me the hours equals 6 times 2 over 3. And that will be 12 over 3, which is 4 hours. Okay, and again, some of you may have noticed that it's three times as many strips, and so we end up with, excuse me, two times as many strips. I'm sorry, we doubled the number of strips, and so we have to double the number of hours. That's a perfectly valid way to work these problems. Okay, but another way to do it is the way that I'm setting up, and that helps when we have numbers that are not so easy to work with. So now we want to know 25 strips. Well, again, we know cartoons to hours is 3 to 2, and that will be the cartoons are 25, and the hours are what we don't know. So here's my equation. I'll cross multiply 3 times the hours equals 25 times the 2. I'll divide by the 3 on both sides and I'll get hours equals 25 times 2 divided by 3 which I will work on my calculator 25 times 2 divided by 3 is 16.67 that's also 16 and 2 thirds okay hours in order to do that Let's do one more example. Okay, this has to do with exchange rates. We have some of these on, in our class as well. So let's take a look at this. One dollar US equals a dollar thirty-one Canadian. And suppose you go to Canada when the pandemic's over and you see something that is seventeen ninety-five in Canadian dollars, and we want to know what the US equivalent to that would be. Well, I have two things that are equal, so again, I can make a ratio out of them. So I can put U.S. over Canadian, and that would be 1 over 131. So let's see what we have here. 1795 Canadian. Well, the Canadian, the way I set this one up, I had the Canadian on the bottom of the fraction. So I'll keep the Canadian on the bottom of the fraction. I always keep the same units on the bottom, which is really why this fraction in the beginning is useful. Helps me to know whether my number goes on the top or the bottom of the fraction. And I want to know how much it costs US. So there's my variable. Now here's my equation. And again, I'll cross multiply 1 times 1795 equals 131 times x. Now I'll divide by the coefficient and they will cancel and that will leave an x here and now I have 1 times 1795 divided by 131 and I'll do that on my calculator. 1 times 1795 divided by 131. Whoops, I put a 1331 in, so let me change that. 1 times 1795 divided by 131. And that gives me 1370 equals x. And so that's what it would cost US. Okay. All right, so we'll do one last example and then we will move on. So here's one more example. 30 pounds of force can push a 70 pound sofa. All right, so I can make a fraction out of that. 30 of force equals 70 pounds sofa. 
how much force for a 98 pound sofa? The force is what we don't know, so the, that's going to be my variable. And it's going to be on the top. And the bottom, we know that the sofa is 98 pounds, so that will go on the bottom because I, this fraction that I set up has the sofa on the bottom. So I'll cross multiply. 98 times 30 equals 70 times x. I'll divide by the coefficient that's on the x, and that gives me 98 times 30 over 70 equals x. And in my calculator, 98 times 30 divided by 70 equals, let's see, 98 times 30 divided by 70 is 42. And that's my answer. So I hope these were helpful and I hope this hit the mark with what your question was. Please let me know in class if this didn't and we can talk some more. And if it did help, please also let me know. Okay, thanks very much. Okay. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.